Okay guys, we are going to take a your normal complex OpenJS grid that has a lot of stuff going on and make it super customizable. And this might even be a two part video because I've done a lot to this. But I want to show you the flexibility that you can do with OpenJS grid. Uh, this is version 0.8. Uh, 1.8. I'll have updates coming soon. Uh, most of this is available here. Some of it's not. Uh, I'll go over that at the end. Okay, so here's your typical grid. Got some drop-down boxes, got some date pickers, some editable fields. It can add, it can save. Okay. Uh, one thing that I've kind of half done and I'm going to do here on the video is that I've changed the delete icon. I've added a special CSS class to give it this, I to give it this icon here instead of the delete button. But the text is still there. Okay. So we need to start there. We need to start by getting rid of this text so that the delete button looks cool. So we are going to go to our JavaScript for our tasks right here. We're going to add a load complete listener. Okay, so when the grid is loaded, that is when we're going to start here. So the first thing we need to do is um, get rid of that text. So that means uh, we can just go ahead and, and we're going to do this globally for all grids. Um, because we don't want it anywhere. So grid delete. So this is just a general jQuery selector dot text blank. That will blank out the text. So refresh. And that was horrible JavaScript because nothing loads right now. So let's see what happened. So, oh, haha, <laughs> right here. Okay, continue. Moving on with the tutorial. Anyway, okay. So now that load complete has done, it has deleted that text and the text is gone. I now have icons for my delete button. And I'm, I'm sure you're wondering, well, what was the icon come from? Well, if I go to my CSS and go to grid delete, you can see that I've overwritten the grid delete with my own background image. That's all. That's all I did for the grid button. Okay, moving on. So now the next thing that we want to do is we want to colorize one column one particular cell in a column. This is something you guys keep wanting to do things to the cells individually and I haven't just I haven't been able to tell you that it's very easy. Okay? So this column is called status, okay, or status. This is the status column. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get every cell in this column and colorize it based on the value of the cell. Now I want the the val because these are drop downs, the value of the cell is actually a number, not this text. You know what? Just to show you, just to show you what I mean by that, I'll come down here to this grid and I'll turn off the ability to select this. Okay? So tasks, uh, status. So status is now type text. Okay? See what the stat? See what the status is? It's a number. Okay? So when I go to do my checks, I don't know what the status is. I don't know the word, the word final, the word complete. I don't know that yet. And the reason that shows up fine in the select is because that does an AJAX call and gets that data. But we need that data here now. So how do we get it? Well, we make a hidden column that has that data. That basically does the same join that the select box does via AJAX. Okay? So how do we do that? Well, we're going to start by going to our PHP file, our grid file right here. And all we're going to do, so here's our status, okay, and our status is uh, right here tasks.status and it's a number what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a field that does the join so we've joined right here left join status on task.status equals status.id and if we go over to status you can see that status has the text in it so we're basically doing the same join that the select box does but we're just doing it here so we're joining here and then we're just selecting it. We're going to call it status class, okay? Because it's a class that we want to give it to. So status class is status.class. Again, this is a joined field because of this. Status class is now available for us. We have no column status class. There is no column for status class. Okay? It's a hidden column, meaning it's there but it's not on the grid. How do we get to it? Well, once we're here, Let's uh, store what the data is. So var data equals grid dot data. Okay, and it's not grid. Sorry, it's this. This being the grid object data. So console dot log data. Let's take a look at what data is. So we'll open our in test inspector and we'll refresh. So data, data dot looking through, looking through row data. Okay, this is where your hidden columns are. Row data status class 
and now we just had to figure out which one we need. Okay, here is that hidden column, so now you can see the value is waiting, or the value is ready. This is how we're going to get our hidden column. So let's start writing that. First thing that we need to do, we're going to comment colorize a cell. What we're going to do is we're going to say this being the grid component dot get call. It's a special function you have for the grid, which will get the entire column. We're going to get call status, okay? And then we want to get all the TDs, all the cells from that column. So we're going to use a, another special function called get TDs from th. th. This is just the function name. I didn't really make it too descriptive. This gets you all the table data cells in a column. So this part right here, if I'll do dot each function that, this loop will get me this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Okay, it'll get me all of these. That's perfect. And then the function takes an i, meaning the index parameter. Okay, so now we're looping through all the TDs. So get class from hidden array. Okay, so now we just got to say var cl, which is stored in our class, equals data. So the data object. Okay, data dot row data status class. That's the hidden column. Now, remember status class had all the had indexes one, two, three. So remember status class right here, zero. Let's collapse these so you don't get confused. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Which one do we want? Well these are the rows, okay? So we know what row we're on because of that I value. So let's use that I value. So status class I. And what we'll do to make it even more descriptive, if we won't call it I, we'll call it row. This is which row we're on. We're looping through, telling it what row. So CL equals data dot row data status class row dot value in order to get the text. That is our class. Okay? So what we can do is console.log CL and now that will oops, that's a colon. And now we've used that hidden column, and you can see waiting, ready, progress, hold, final, final, final. Okay? That is that database value that we've gotten that is also a member of this row, of this status, okay, that is hidden. That is how you use a hidden column. So what can we do with these? Well, we can apply them as classes. So all we've done ahead of time is we've given ourselves a bunch of styling, a border bottom, that has to do with each of those. So now all we have to do is apply that class. So we'll just take that class and we will say this dot add class. Now remember, currently this refers to the TD, not the grid anymore. This dot add class status because I want to give that, that I want to give it that class anyway. This is that's kind of specific to me, but you really want to pay attention to add class CL. So we have now added the class status and the class CL. CL being the one from the hidden table. Once we've done that, ta-da, we have colorized the cells based on their color. So now we've done a really cool job of colorizing. And let's say you and let's say you wanted the color to not be in CSS but to be stored in the database, you could store another called status color. And you could pull that status color out and then actually change the color right here with inline JavaScript. So you have those hidden columns to use in OpenJS script. So we've used a hidden column to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna do another one super fast because I don't have a lot of time. Um, this other one, what we need to do is uh, if the status is final, we want to disable editing. Okay, this is another huge request. So, still in load complete, what we're going to do is uh, get that same status column. Okay, so we could do this in the same loop, but I'll just do it in another loop. Get that same status column, get that same status that we got from before, so that CL, the exact same one. Now, if that, if that value is final, okay, that means we need to find the editable cells and destroy them, okay? So that'll be task one, is find the editable cells and destroy them. So what we need to do is, while we're looping through, again, we're currently on a TD, we'll say this uh, dot uh, parents tr, so get the parent tr dot find td dot editable. So we're going to find all the editable cells, okay? And we're going to loop through, over, loop over each of them. So now we've got all the editable cells. And we're going to um, an editable cell is a cell that has a um, is a cell that has a text in it. So we're just going to grab that value and replace it. So all we're going to do is this right here, which just says st restore the HTML, and we're going to look for the the colon input. We're going to look for the input box and value. So we're basically taking the value of the text box and replacing it 
over the text box and then removing the editable class. It helps if I spell this correctly, it's editable cell. And what that gives us is now these text fields are no longer editable. We want to delete, get rid of the delete button as well. So we'll just say uh, this dot parents tr dot find dot grid delete delete dot remove. So now we've deleted on that row the delete buttons. Okay, the last step is to do these drop down boxes. This is a kind of a new feature, a new listener that's been added that allows you to catch when a select box is loaded. So this is kind of new. I'm going to paste this because I'm out of time and I'm sorry that I won't be able to explain it. But uh, select loaded. Um, first we're going to get the data object, then we're going to uh, again get all the columns, every column, and we're going to get the status class of that first row and we're going to say if that's final then we're going to take the span text I have special select box basically you're going to rip out the text from the select box and put it in and what this gives us is a lovely non-editable cells where the whereas the other ones are editable it basically freezes the cell just like this okay this is a new thing that's going to be out in the next version and then the other thing that's going to happen is when you are finished loading we will update the project like that so again super customizable way to use OpenJS grid I just wanted to kind of show you how much it can actually do with just a very little bit of coding